Earlier this month, Boeing made an announcement that shocked much of the aviation industry. They said that they were not planning any new aircraft until the middle of next decade. Did Boeing just seal their own fate, surrendering itself into being a very distant number two behind Airbus, or are we missing something? Stay tuned. Boeing recently held its first Investor Day since 2018. This was an important event where they had the chance to lay out their plans for the next decade and beyond. It was a hotly anticipated event by the industry, given how many obstacles Boeing have faced between 2018 and where they are now. They have faced issues with the Boeing 737 MAX, the production of its 787, the development of the 777X, and a host of problems affecting military programs, and then of course the pandemic. Investors were really keen to hear how Boeing were planning to fix these issues, how they were going to regain its position in the market, and to restore confidence in general. The industry didn't really have a concrete picture of Boeing's strategy after all of those problems began, but it appears that the plans that Boeing presented, including a projected economic recovery by 2025 or 26, generally satisfied Wall Street. But what really caught the attention of the industry insiders was one specific statement made by Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun. He said that Boeing's next all-new design will not enter service until at least the middle of next decade. He also said that he doesn't think that the company will even start designing it before 2030. This is an extraordinary statement. I mean, some industry observers had indeed guessed that Boeing wasn't going to announce a new aircraft program soon, but hearing that this was actually the plan directly from Boeing's CEO felt a bit unreal. And this is the reason why. So Boeing's last all-new aircraft design is the 787 Dreamliner, which entered service in 2011. If Boeing really does launch its next aircraft in 2035 or even one or two years later, which isn't an unusual delay for a new aircraft, then it will have had at least a 25-year gap between new aircraft launches. To put this into perspective, John Ostrauer in the Air Current pointed out that in a 27-year period in the 20th century, Boeing released the 707, 727, 737, 747, 757 and 767. So even if we accept that modern aircraft are harder and slower to develop and certify, 25 years without a new design just isn't normal for a manufacturer like Boeing. So then why would they do that? Well, we know that Boeing still has a lot of aircraft programs to sort out, but why would they make such a huge innovation gap official? Well, it turns out that there are actually some simple answers to this. Because for it to be worth it for Boeing to invest a boatload of money into a new aircraft design, Boeing believes that this new design must be considerably more efficient than the current designs are. With gradual improvements, current engine technology could improve efficiency by around 10%, which Boeing says it just is not good enough. But General Electric in the United States and Safran in France have a joint venture called CFM, who are the makers of the current engines for the Boeing 737 family, for example. They are now working on something called the CFM RISE, which is an open fan program that could replace the high bypass turbofan engines that we use on all modern aircraft today. The open fan would effectively increase the bypass ratio, meaning the amount of air that is pushed past the engine core by a lot, improving efficiency much further. Now, I might come back to the CFM race in another video, but the key point here is that that engine won't be ready until the middle of next decade. And this fact is likely a big factor in Boeing's decision to postpone the launch of its next all-new aircraft. But it's not the only factor. Boeing has previously stated that it wants to change the way they're designing and putting their aircraft into production. Because what most people don't realize is that right now, getting a design from the prototype stage into a full production is in itself a very time-consuming project. Especially when a lot of subcontractors are involved. Now, Boeing wants to design a new set of tools, a digital framework that will include its key suppliers and design not only the aircraft, but its production line completely digitally. If that works, the time it will take to design a new aircraft from blank sheets to certified and entering service could be reduced to only four or five years, which would be lightning fast in the world of aircraft manufacturing. This has been an ambition in Boeing for many years now, but their efforts have so far been really slow to bear fruit. 
The company has applied this strategy to its new military trainer for the US Air Force, the T-7 Red Hawk, but trying it out alongside its supply chain for commercial jets is a different and much bigger challenge. This is because at the moment, so many structural components and internal systems aren't actually made or designed by Boeing themselves. Finally, a big reason why Boeing may be reluctant to start a project to compete with Airbus is, well, Airbus. The European manufacturer are working on their own development studies, including one plan for a new composite wing, which they call the Wing of Tomorrow. With that project, the likely way that Airbus will respond if Boeing announces a new aircraft, in the size of like 757, which is a reasonable guess, would be to launch a re-wing project of the Airbus 321neo. With that, they could also possibly lengthen its fuselage at the same time instantly, creating a super efficient competitor to that new Boeing design. So to recap then, Boeing is likely waiting for Safran's next generation Rice engine, which will become available around 2035. They also need time to develop their digital design and production tools and they need to wait until the offerings of Airbus gets a bit older and will no longer be competitive enough with a new wing, forcing Airbus to design an all new aircraft as well. So then it all makes sense and Boeing just decided to wait this one out. Or did they? After this short message from my sponsor I will tell you what might actually be happening. Are your kids having trouble learning maths? Maybe you yourself find some STEM subject challenging, like computer science or scientific thinking. If that's the case, you should definitely check out today's sponsor, which is Brilliant, an absolutely fantastic interactive STEM learning tool. Brilliant has more than 60 different courses than things like algorithms, scientific thinking, logics, and pre-algebra. And now you can see maths in a completely new light using their everyday math course, which puts a brilliant new perspective on fundamental math principles. What I personally like most about the platform is their hands-on approach to education in a low-pressure environment. And now you can learn at your very own pace and on the go. So let Brilliant help you achieve your personal and professional success today by clicking on the link here below, which is brilliant.org slash mentor now. That will give you a whopping 20% off their annual premium subscription fee. Thank you, Brilliant. Now back to the video. Now we're going to have to become a little bit speculative here, which is always fun. Here's a question for you. Do you think that Boeing were entirely honest here? Could this announcement simply be a smokescreen? And if it is, why? Actually, let's rephrase the question a bit. If Boeing was planning to launch a new aircraft in the next three or four years, would it be a good idea to announce these plans now? This question is a lot easier to answer. No, it wouldn't be. As we saw in another recent video, Boeing is currently trying to finish the certification processes of two aircraft, the Boeing 737 MAX 7 and the much bigger MAX 10. They will need a deadline extension to get the MAX 10 certified and possibly also the MAX 7. And some lawmakers have shown a resistance in actually granting them that extension. So if Boeing was to announce that they were planning to make a new aircraft, the smallest version of which would likely be close to the MAX 10 in size, that would very likely increase the calls for Boeing to not make the MAX 10 at all and possibly hurt their chances of getting that deadline extension. So by putting emphasis on stability and financial recovery, Boeing is actually giving itself another argument in favor of the MAX 10 certification. And not only that, they could really use some more home support in the United States in general right now. Remember, Boeing isn't just a manufacturer of commercial jets, they are also a major strategic defense contractor. They are making fighter jets, space vehicles, plus military versions of some airliners, and some of these military programs, like the KC-46 tanker, the T-7 trainer, and the next Air Force One, are also facing both problems and delays. There are times when companies need to show that they're bold, but perhaps this isn't really the time for Boeing to do that. On the other hand, encouraging home support in the form of contracts and orders for aircraft and the rest of their products would really come in handy right now. More to the point, allowing Boeing to fall significantly behind Airbus might well be something that the United States don't want to let happen. And still, Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun said that he's happy for the company to have a 40-60% to market split with Airbus, with the European company getting the bigger share. 
A 40 to 60 split might not sound too bad until you realize that if that happens, it would mean that Airbus would actually be selling 50% more aircraft than Boeing would. Plus, according to many analysts, the 40-60% scenario is actually a very optimistic one for Boeing. Recovering from an even bigger split than that would be next to impossible because Airbus would then be able to outdevelop Boeing on everything that it does. And this brings us to the next reason why Boeing might be holding their cards very close to their chest. Airbus might well be able to re-wing the Airbus 321neo, but this doesn't mean that they want to do that. They too would likely very much prefer to wait for those CFM rise engines to be available. The point I'm trying to make here is that Airbus is very unlikely to rush a new aircraft to market if it thinks that Boeing is sitting idle. If Boeing launched a plane, Airbus could feel compelled to do the same, but why would Airbus do this if they knew that they would have 60% of the market by doing nothing? Napoleon once said, never interrupt your enemy while he's making a mistake, but this also works both ways. So what is supporting that this is the strategy of Boeing then? Well, we know that Boeing has been talking with their airline customers about what its next aircraft will be like. We also know that Boeing was very busy working on the details of a new mid-size jet and very close to launching it when the 737 MAX was grounded. Initially, those plans were only put on hold, but almost a year after the MAX groundings, Boeing ousted its previous CEO, Dennis Muhlenberg. Cancelling the plans for the next jet was one of the first things that the current CEO did. The point here is that Boeing might well have already done quite a lot of design work on this new aircraft. Boeing's new CEO said in his recent announcement on the investor conference, I don't think we're going to even get to the drawing board this decade. But the basis of this aircraft might already be somewhere on a drawing board waiting. Another bit of evidence pointing in this direction is that according to Liham News, Boeing is gradually increasing its spending on research and development. It's still not quite at pre-pandemic levels back when Boeing's next aircraft was actively being worked on, but it's heading that way. They're also hiring new engineers and they're trying a bit harder to retain the engineers that they already have on the payroll. Obviously, this is only speculations. In practice, developing an all-new aircraft would involve a lot of people and companies, including customers like airlines, lessers and suppliers. Trying to do that in secret would be, well, tricky <laughs> to put it mildly. So if Boeing is working on something, it won't stay secret for very long. Boeing and Airbus share a lot of suppliers after all. Again, Boeing CEO reassured investors about the company's return to financial stability in terms of free cash flow by 2025 or 26. If that is indeed the case, that would be a great time to announce that a new aircraft is in the works. Keeping it under the wraps until then would give Boeing a good head start against Airbus. Of course, that new aircraft would have to then work with current engine technology, at least to start with, but with efficiency improvements to the airframe and lower production cost thanks to the new digital frameworks we were talking about before, the new aircraft would likely still be competitive, especially if Boeing would design it with the future Rise engine upgrade in mind. Of course, Airbus will be considering all possibilities about Boeing's future, including this scenario, and they won't simply be sitting on their hands. Hopefully for Boeing, Airbus hasn't already reached a point where they could outdevelop them. Now, when it comes to the share price, Wall Street is worried about the possibility of a world recession right now, so it likes conservative thinking like the kind Boeing seems to be projecting. But aviation industry analysts seriously doubt that Boeing would be able to recover if they fall too far behind Airbus. What I hope for is that Boeing doesn't slowly fade into irrelevance like McDonnell Douglas did. 25 years without a new aircraft is a really long time and incidentally, the last all-new design that McDonnell Douglas produced, the DC-10, entered service in 1971 and the company was then absorbed by Boeing in 1997, 26 years later. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens during the coming five years and I would love to hear your thoughts about it. Please leave a comment below, like the video and subscribe if you think that I earned it. Now, check out this video next, which is really relevant, or binge on this playlist. If you want to support the work that me and my team does, then consider becoming a Patreon or buy yourself some merch. It is Christmas soon, after all. Have an absolutely fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.